Okay. Um, we we've looked at the video of the um, the product study that we're doing, which was a sander, just a cheap one, and now we're going to make the report. The report's normally done in Word. Um, you could use Word or Excel, um, and the best way is to think of it in terms of a table. But our first job is to look at the photographs that we have. Now I'm going to open um, the photos in Paint because everyone should have access to that instead of, you know, Photoshop or something. <clears throat> so I'm going go and open uh, these files here that I've got. <clears throat> and as per usual, it's a really, really large scale um, for paint. That's it at full size. So we could do a resize here. Um, this may be half size. That should do us. Now I'm going to put numbers uh, using paint. I'm going to put numbers on here for all the parts that I'm interested in that have been laid out here. This is the main picture that shows everything, and then there'll be some zoomed up pictures uh, to show uh, things like the um, the rotating part here. The rotor. All right, here we go. So numbers first, just uh, the housing number one. Ink. Got to think of a color that um, there's no reds, so we should be red. A bit chunky. Got all the uh, Photoshop fonts in here. That's why it's such a big list. Come on, where is it? No, oh, we are. There we go. <clears throat> and then I'll probably put some arrows or, or something in to. Um, It's a bit thick. Huh. One. So there we go. That's it. So we're going to do everywhere. I'm going to try and do this roughly in order of um, significance. So one and the opposite side would both be one. So I don't really need to do the other side. <clears throat> the next most significant thing probably is the um, I might just do the cables and sanding pad, shooty thing. The other thing is you have to come up with names for stuff. That'll be fun. Actually, I uh, don't think I like this. I'm going to start again. You think about uh, as you're doing the report, you, you're going to be breaking some of these down into separate parts. So there's no point in me numbering the whole assembly because I can't say the material is this and the production is that, except for those housings. But if I point, for example, to a cable, well, it's made out of different things. So I have to think about the different parts of the cable. So it's the cable itself. And there's the wires. And there's the plug part. And there's the pins. I'll put the label as well, but that's getting to see. And this base here, I've got the foam part, and I've also got the plastic part. And I've got the lever, which is I've got, the, I've got these, um, what would you call that? <clears throat> you're going to have fun thinking of names of stuff when you do this. Okay, you could call that a support. 
this region. Gonna get to 25 pretty easily, isn't it? <clears throat> that little uh, bearing thing in here. Probably not doing this in the most magnificent order. And there's the little carbon brush. That's a good one to put in. To that one, and then the we can probably do that in more detail in another view. Just, uh, we just get that little. No, let's leave that one alone. That's probably it for this photo, and then the the detailed ones of the of the rotor and the uh, the armature and the button we'll do in the other photos. So let's just throw the arrows in. You have to be fairly specific about what you're referring to for numbering. <clears throat> Don't want to get mixed up with anything else. And I have a number three that shouldn't be there. Mm. Paint. Question. Gonna zoom out slightly. It's about right. And don't need quite as much length there. Whoop. There's my first image, so I'm gonna save that one. Files. Sorry. Save. Three, on and on, on, materials, video, product study, right up. It's the, it's the images. And <coughs> right, so that's that one. Now this. This, let's take this button here. <coughs> that will get zoomed right down a fair bit. Resizing that. Yeah, there it is. <coughs> okay, so number now, what number was I up to? Seventeen. So carrying on from seventeen. <clears throat> 18 for the button, got a spring there. <clears throat> We've got a little bar there, and we've got the actual terminal, brass terminal there. We've also got the housing. Which I probably won't use because we've got enough of that plastic everywhere. 
19 is the spring. 18, 19, 18, 19, that's cool. What happens when the Photoshop person uses honey? <coughs> All right, there's my image for the switch. <coughs> Just And just getting this up to 21. <coughs> All right, next one. This one here. Right, now we've got this one in more detail. And those springs and things, but we haven't done like these little brass tabs. But let's pick on this armature because that's the, the, the rotating point because that's got all fun bits in it. We're up to 21. So we've got this bearing here. Two. The shaft itself. A bit the impeller okay and now we just hit 25 that's the limit as far as uh you've got to do at least 25 it doesn't matter if you go over a bit we've got some fun things we want to do here so let's go to 26 for this one uh i'm going to get this nylon here 27 and these little tabs here 28 <clears throat> the solder on those that would be a really good one Make that 29 actually. And this one in here would be 28. You could do the circuit board as well. That would be 30. That's a good place to stop. Ah, the copper wire. I haven't been touched. That's no good. Better hit the copper wire somewhere. We've got a copper wire in the coil here and also got copper wire on the motor itself. So uh, let's pick the one in the motor. Um, well, rotor, I should say that. So that can be thirty. So let's let's make it thirty-one components. Stop there. We've gone overboard by a few, but doesn't really. Twenty-nine. We want twenty-nine to be the solder, and twenty-eight to be the brass tab. Twenty-seven is this nylon housing. Twenty-four is that copper commutator. Twenty-two is that sintered bearing. Twenty-three is the stainless steel shaft. 31 is my copper wire, 25 is that impeller, 26 is the um, the counterweight. And that's it. Shrink that down a little. There's my uh, drawing, it gives us 31 parts that will be identified. So we can't have the same, we can't have two different numbers on the same part, so every number has to be a unique part. Now there are other parts in there, of course, we haven't, we've missed quite a few, um, 
So we're just picking the, the highlight, highlighting the the ones that we think are, are more interesting. Uh, variety, we want plenty of variety, that's the key. Uh, we did the laminations, I hope, on that first big picture, and that's a very important one, lamination. We could have done the laminations on the road, it's probably not a bad idea to do that. And probably of the epoxy, actually, I'm tempted to just add a few more here. I mean, seriously, that the epoxy is pretty amazing. It's definitely worth looking at. And the laminations. Um, what the first epoxy. Say this one. This is this one. Okay, so that's it. Um, I've got enough uh, pictures now. So now it's time for to start the document, uh, which is basically a table. Now, if you don't have Word, although as a student you can get um, Microsoft Office 365. Um, so I'm just going to jump into Word here. If you don't have it, you could probably download um, Open Office. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll just show you how to do that at the end of the video, but I'll just do this in Word. All right, just a blank document as per usual, and um, start typing product study sender. <clears throat> Well, it's actually an orbital sander if you have the proper term for it, orbital sander. All right, and from that, we make a table. So we're inserting a table here. Now, let's think we've got the number, the name, material, process, and give ourselves another one for comment. That should do us. Okay. It's a good number, a small one. Name's a bit longer. Yeah, that's a bit of a bit. insert a whole bunch of rows. Do Goodness me. <clears throat> now you probably can't see anything because it's so small. Zoom a bit. Uh, process. <clears throat> All right, that'll do for our headings. I think we might color that one in to make it look pretty. Maybe do that later. And, um, Etc. All right, so back to um, we need to put our pictures in. So we can put it here. <coughs> Inserting a picture. Let me just go and find that picture wherever it is. The numbered big one on there. <clears throat> so number one is that housing on the outside, and it actually told us what the plastic was, which is nice. Most of the newer uh, appliances will tell you it'll have a number, uh, or better, it might have some letters there. Um, so we call this um, housing 
This is the fun part. Now you have to be um, coming up with names, which is kind of an interesting job for an engineer quite often with designer it has to when they're making something <clears throat> they could even name so when you made a drawing number <clears throat> you have to come up with a name for it so you might call that housing uh, and the material which was told was can i remember it was abs wasn't it yeah pretty sure <clears throat> My font size is 12, it's a bit big. <clears throat> I'm going to be packing info in here, it might squeeze it down to 10. <clears throat> Alternative uh, materials, yes, certainly would be. It'd be nice to have um, polyamide 66 um, glass fields. 30% or something, that'd be nice. That would be a, a better, that's nylon polyamide. Um, that would be uh, for a, a more high quality tool. This is uh, Del Cheapo, so they don't put glass in the plastic because it wears out the tool and they have to make a new tool. So they don't want to do that, they just want to spit out a million of them. So, uh, oops, get back to here. So in the picture, that's number one. Number two is the cable for the, for the, um, the cord, so that would be the um, cord cable, I guess. And that's PVC. That's plasticized PVC, by the way. So you can get plasticized, plasticized or unplasticized. Plasticized. Um, plasticized makes it um, flexible, rubbery kind of, well, not rubbery, but flexible. Like um, you don't want the plastic to be too hard for cable. Process is, is extrusion. This one is actually it's a co-extrusion, actually, because you're extruding while you're pulling wire through it. So, you, well, actually, co-extruding would be more than one piece of plastic. Alternative materials besides PVC, not really. They don't really like using anything else, but they can can sometimes use polyethylene. Um, except you can't glue the stuff. So, um, there are polyethylene cables as well, normally for underground. Um, use because it's even better than PVC for resisting corrosion underground. That's number two. Number three. Oh, number three miss is missing. Okay, well, we can fix that. Come back to paint. Now the problem with paint is not very good for history. I'm going to go and open the same file again, which was the first number one. So. And I'll put a number three in here. And here we have a good one. We have the ideal candidate. We forgot to do this one. Number three. Thank you. See this little shoot, dust shoot. I think it's for uh, collecting dust. I'll save this as, save it as it was. And now don't forget to bring it back in because Word doesn't know. I've changed it, so I have to delete that and then insert that again. <clears throat> so the numbered one, this one. And now I've got the three on there. So there's my three, which will be some sort of shoot thing. Just call it shoot, dust shoot. That might be better. So you're making these names up. Try and be, um, try and be engineery when you do it. I think that is probably polypropylene. But do I know? Not really. If you're not at all sure, you can put a question mark at the end because you kind of have a guess. I'd be pretty sure on that. And we know this ABS because it said so. Yeah. Uh, that dust sheet would also be injection molded. There are going to be some repeats in this column, that's for sure. Alternative material, yes, it could have been ABS. It could be ABS. Not sure, really. Unless I did some analysis on it. <clears throat> but um, it's just right there. Right. <clears throat> That's number three. And number four is the plug end of the cable. Right. So that's also plasticized PVC. It just seems a lot harder because it's got stuff inside it. 
but yeah, same materials. And number four would be continuation of the cord cable. So this is the plug. Just be called the plug, wouldn't it? So everything else would be the same there. <clears throat> but number five is those pins. Now they are kind of interesting. Number they they're made of brass, and so number five is brass. <coughs> um, plug pins. <coughs> so they're brass, and then they're also um, chrome plated or something plated. I'm just say plated because chrome may not be the best material for electricity. Might be nickel. I think it's a bit better, maybe. Process of making that thing. <laughs> Interesting. How do you make that? It would be punched out of a plate, most likely. Alternative material for the plugs. You don't see much else. Um, but you do see them unplated, though. Just unplated? You see them uh, just the pure brass without any coating. <clears throat> That's about the only option. I can't see. Oh, you could possibly use copper. Could also be used. Not that you see that very often, but um, could be done. Actually, you could use silver. That'd be nice. That's five. Number six is the pad. By the time we get up to seven, I think you've probably got the idea. So we'll just do uh, two more. Six and seven. Uh, let's finish off this this sand. Six and eight. Ten. Yeah, let's get a ten. Right. Six is the EVA pad underneath. The sanding pad. So uh, sanding pad. Uh, yeah, it'll work. So that should be okay. <laughs> sanding pad. Sanding pad material. I think that's EVA. And that process. Hmm. And what process are we talking about? When we say process, we mean the last process. So it would have been uh, probably die cut, like pressed out. In shape and alternative materials, lots of different alternatives, um, better, higher quality rubbers and stuff. The problem with EVA is it has a bit of memory. So if you leave the sander uh, sitting on on the pad on a shelf for six months, when you go to use it, it's got a dent in it. So you'd have to make sure you store them upside down. Um, but there are other foams which are better than that, like a, a rubber foam is really, really good. So you can get better. Foams then EVA. <clears throat> EVA is nice and light though. Number seven is this foot um, of the sanding pad, which is an injection molded part. So, and that's going to be ABS. So, just grip that one here. Stick it in here. Yeah. Sand uh, foot, maybe. See how I'm just kind of trying to come up with ideas here. There's no argument about um, whether I'm right or not. Right, just come up with something sensible. Number nine, I, I wanted to get to ten because we get some interesting ones now. Number nine is this wire bracket which acts as a lever to clamp the sandpaper on. So number nine, sandfoot seven. Oh, eight, eight is this uh, this thing here. I missed eight. It would be the sender support. Nine is now the spring. So what would you call this uh, wire clamp? Material is spring steel here, which is a high carbon steel, probably about um, 0.5% carbon or so. Maybe, guessing. Right, so this is. Uh, they are wire, wire bending machines. An alternative material, not really. Can't think of any. And it's not, can't really do anything. You can't really make springs out of anything better than steel. There's not really anything that's better than steel. At making springs. That's why springs are nearly always made out of steel. Unless there's an electrical reason or something, you might use some copper brass in uh, valves, maybe. 
Number 10 is a screw. We had to get to a screw because you're going to definitely run into those. Now, when you say screw, you're supposed to say the diameter of the screw and the length of the screw and the type of head. So uh, there's quite a there's quite an art to it. For example, when you're in Inventor, if I was to look up screws, go file, and I'm going to let's say I'm going to open, go to Content Center. You sorry. Get to wake up, is it? Open from content center. Right, here we go. So I'm just going to come and get a screw looking a little bit like that. This the screw that I have in there. So again, just open up box. Sorry, my computer's going to say slow. And I reckon it's a round headed thing. And it had a Phillips head. What I remember. And look at these standards BS, that's British standards. So we want to get more to Australian standards. So AS is Australian standard. Metric. Right, we've got these two here. Let's just go to this one. And it was probably a M. Hmm, we probably should have measured that when we were doing it. What size thread was the that? Probably about a five, I'd say. Maybe four or five. <coughs> so let's see. It says five. And let's say I measured the length, which I forgot to do. Sorry about that. But let's say it was 20 minutes long. Hit Y. All right, there's my screw. I'm just waiting for it. So there's my screws popped up in Inventor. Now, um, okay, no more screws. Thanks very much. Go away. And we can sort of look at it and think, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's that's pretty much the thing. Look what it says. is metric M5. So A is falling. That's the, that's the name of it. Metric M5. So the, the thread's five, M stands for metric, and 20 is the length of the threaded part. So from underneath the head, so from here to the end is 20 millimeters long. All right, so let's um, try and copy that idea. So this bolt, this screw is a M5 by 20, and then it's a Phillips head. Uh, you can just shorten head. You could say be to if people are familiar enough with them. Material will be mild steel and zinc electroplated. Not not hot dipped. It's way too small to be hot dipped galvanized anyway. The process now, what's the process? Well, it's plated and machined and pressed as well. Alternative materials, yeah, it could have been stainless steel, that'd be nice. But you're not going to find stainless steel screws on the El Cheapo XU1 sander. All right, do you get the idea? Just pay a bit more attention when it comes to screws. And when you have plating and, and whatever processes uh, in the process, always put the last process first. Right, and, and you might go back a few, but don't go back too far. Don't go all the way back to, you know, digging up iron ore or something. So you just say injection molding, that's the last process. Um, this one here, punching out the brass plate was the last process um, to make it. All right, and that's about it. That's how you make a product study. When you finish the product study, you um, imp uh, upload it into uh, the Moodle. Slide. So my um, Strava. I didn't do that on purpose. I did accidentally. I'm honest. Um, when you when you finish your oh, this is the labs long assessment. And down the bottom here, product study. You just click product study, and then it will open up. Um, well, for you, it'll it'll you won't get this because I'm a teacher. You'll get um, upload and you click it and you pick that file and upload the file. But just make sure that this is all just one file. The pictures are in the file, embedded into it like this. 
um, we don't want our pictures and things separate. And when you save it, go file, save as, and you're gonna save it somewhere. <coughs> All the way back. Folders, materials, products, study. So don't just call it product study, that's no good. You got to put your name. So, um, Joe, Boggs, product study. And you could put, say, what it is, the sender. That's it. So, and then docx. Make sure you put your name on it and ideally put your student number two. So I don't get, um, I have had them handed in and I've got no idea who it is, um, which is not a very good idea. I mean, I can work it out off Moodle, but it's not easy. All right, there you go. That is the product study. And turn itself off. <coughs> 